Hello everyone, Troy from Dash Cam Owners Australia here. Today I just wanted to touch upon parking mode on dash cameras. It's something I get asked about quite a lot these days and um, it's not quite as simple as people seem to think it is. Parking mode can be a great feature and save you from a lot of those car park bingles, but it's not as simple as plug and play in most cases. Now your average car, probably about 90% of cars on the market, they have an accessory switched power socket, which means your 12 volt socket only comes on when your ignition is on. Now of course a dash camera needs power to run, so the second you turn that ignition off, the dash camera stops. Now, if there's no power going to it, it's not going to be able to record while you're parked. So the first thing you need is to have a permanently powered 12 volt socket for the dash camera. Now there's plenty of hardwire kits out on the market that are capable of doing this. You generally want one with some sort of power management device built into it. That will stop your battery being flattened by the camera. They don't draw a lot of power, but still over time it's something that can happen. So you want to make sure that it will cut off the camera's power if your battery starts getting too low. Now I've talked about some of these power management devices in the past before and I did a small install video based around the Vicovation Power Plus. Now these units can be installed if you have a little bit of technical and electrical know-how when it comes to a car. If you don't, it's best left up to a auto electrician. You don't want to be uh, frying the wiring of your car, starting fires, stuff like that. So once you've got all that side figured out, then it's fairly simple. There's plenty of cameras on the market that advertise a parking mode. Some are just motion sensing based, others are based off shock and the G sensor in the camera. So it's good to have a look around, see what they offer up in that terms. Now the motion sensing style of a parking mode, it's basically as it seems. Someone walks in front of the lens, the camera will start recording. You get some that will have what's called a pre-buffer, so it will actually record the few seconds before they walked in front. So that's another feature to look out for when it comes to parking mode. What I'll do now is I'll try and set up some parking mode for you and just give you an idea of what that's like parked on the side of a residential street. Now I didn't end up recording the side of the road, I ended up going to a parking lot just because it's sort of much easier to get footage from a parking lot rather than a residential street, but the same principle applies. This is where parking mode is going to be useful to most people anyway. Now that clip that just started then, that started without me in the car, cars turned off, and it was triggered by that white vehicle driving in front of the lens. So that's where the camera started its recording, where you saw it then. So as you can see, with this camera, it's sort of the second it starts, it will start recording. As I mentioned earlier, you can get some cameras that will start the recording from a couple seconds before it's actually detected the movement. That's called pre-buffer, and it's something that may interest some people. Now, here's another clip just shortly. As you can see, it started as this gentleman's just walked directly in front of my car. Now, this particular camera sort of takes its motion from directly in front of the lens, roughly from the the area in front of between the two aerials so some cameras will take any movement out of the whole sensor area some will take it just from the direct center of the lens that's also something worth investigating if you are looking into parking mode now either way i hope this video sort of helped educate you on how parking mode works um, if you have any further questions feel free to ask down in the comment section below and i'll do my best to get to you thank you have a good day